How are you doing? You well? Yeah. It's lovely to be back here in London. I've just spent a few days up in Scotland doing some gigs up there, right? I did a few gigs in Edinburgh and then a few in Glasgow. My God, the two places are so different, right? Edinburgh, like the really clean and intelligent stuff, of which there isn't that much in my set. And I went to Glasgow for them, the dirtier the better, right? And at the end of the gig I said, why is it that you like jokes about rape and domestic violence? And one legend at the back says, because we can all relate to that, pal! I was like, you fucking legend. I didn't bother cry or call the police, I did both. But when I was there, I had, um, I had an epiphany when I was there. I had two, actually. The first one, never go back to Glasgow. The second one, I'm not sure if you remember, as some of you might have been here, I started writing poetry towards the end of my three minute sets, right? And I've written another poem, um, and I just, I'm literally down here this week, just one week, to try and uh, try it out in front of you before some more gigs next week. So, uh, if that's alright, I'll just try through the poem. I'm going to sit down, properly pretentious, I know, but I am going to sit down. Is that alright if I go through the poem? Yep. Yeah. Very eager tonight, aren't you? <sighs> Alex. Like any normal family, I had a mum and a dad. They loved each other very much, and for that I was glad. I would play football with dad, and would cook with mum, go shopping with my sister, and lay in the sun. We would go to the beach, and I would play in the sand, go for walks in the park, skipping, hand in hand. The family was a unit that no one could break. The bond was so strong, it could not be faked. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want it because they're actually divorced now. But, um, <laughs> mum was a no. That's not funny. <laughs> actually, it is because I get a massive student loan because it's done a month. Anyway. <laughs> That's by the by. Mum was a nurse and dad was in banking. Sister went to school and I stayed home wanking, watching TV. <laughs> One Friday evening, Dad came home late. He burst into my room. Can I have a word, mate? His mind seemed troubled and his face seemed red as he found the gay porn beneath my bed. Turns out he hadn't. The coast was clear. He should never find out about my passion for the rear. I'm not actually gay, it's just poetic fun. I don't actually care if you're fascinated by bum. I know I'm digressing, I just don't want to sound rude. I have no particular issue with seeing a man nude. If you are gay and want to see my show, I'm not homophobic, I won't say no. I mean, lots of gays enjoy my comic flow, like this lovely gentleman sat in the front row. <laughs> I should have watched what earlier? I did, I was there. slightly threatened. This is worse than Glasgow. <laughs> it's not. Uh, back to the point then. The story about my dad. Well, he's a bit of a geezer. In fact, he's a proper lad. Like, I remember when I was younger, me and him went for a walk and he stabbed someone. <laughs> Poems don't have to rhyme, do they? So... <laughs> but seriously, when he's angry, his eyes go really wide. He also hits children, which is why I hide. So we're sat on my bed and he's staring into my eyes. My legs begin to shake as his volume starts to rise. Who the hell was that girl that stayed over last night? The first word I could think of. Shite. Listen son, I think it's time we have a chat about girls and sex and things like that. Okay, look dad, there's really no need. I've learnt it all from a mate's DVD. And we've got the internet. I've seen loads of things, like fat naked midgets wearing tiny G-strings. <laughs> Or that German girl that's pissing in the street while 16 Chinese blokes jizz on her feet. <laughs> or that really old woman dressed as a nurse having sex with a goat in the back of a hearse. <laughs> Sorry. My dad looked at me with a face of shock. I'm now going to teach you how to wash your cock. Honestly, Dad, I promise it's fine. I know how to wash down there. It smells divine. It does, actually, as well. It's fair to say my dad felt ashamed. I mean, how is he, with me? how is he to know? Dad's not to blame. Things got worse when Dad told Mum she's got morals similar to a nun. How old is she? What's her name? I started to smile. This is not a game. Her name is Laura, and she's everything to me. We met at school in the library. She's beautiful and amazing, and I love her so much. She's a few years below. She's not legal as such. 
But she's mature for her age, or so I'm told. I couldn't speak French when I was four years old. <laughs> now the Glaswegians love that bit, I can't... <laughs> Dad started crying and Mum fell to the floor. I shouldn't have told them that, I should say no more. I backed out the room as quiet as a mouse. No son of mine is having sex in this house. I stayed at Laura's place, just for a little while, at least until Mum and Dad had started to smile. Her parents didn't really seem to mind. Her dad was in prison and her mum they couldn't find. That's sad, actually. I built up the courage to give Mum and Dad a ring. Now's not the best time, we're still thinking. Days went past and I became very low. Nothing could cheer me up, not even Laura's sweet glow. Me and her were awesome. The girl is great. Shall I marry her? I began to procrastinate. Big word. Will you marry me? I asked her one morning outside the play school underneath the awning. Now, for the poets among you, you'll realise that that is two two verse, and that's fuck. Anyway, are you mental? <laughs> Are you mental, she said. I'm four years old. The ring was a waste, 15 karat gold. I take it that's a no, I said, feeling sad. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I mean, are you mad? No, Laura, I'm not mad. I'm deeply in love. You're a breath of fresh air, my high-flying dove. <laughs> <laughs> How have I got a girlfriend? Well, that was the end of me and Laura. I miss her so much, I simply adore her. I went back home. The atmosphere was tense. Dad was in the garden, painting the fence. Dad, I'm sorry. I know I've done wrong. He carried on painting, singing some song. Dad, listen to me. Don't you understand? Laura is my girl. Me and her, hand in hand. Yes, we have sex and love to kiss. Being with her is absolute bliss. Dad put the brush down and gave me a hug. My poor little son, you're such a mug. I know how you feel about Laura. You'll miss her. But I've got to tell you this. Laura's your sister. <laughs> Not a conventional way to end, to end a romantic poem. Um, we could have been in love, or she could have been older than four. I just got to tell you this. I wrote, I read that to my dad from Glasgow the other day. Hey, this is so pretentious, that damn. But I read it to my dad the other day, and I, I read it to him, and he goes, it's good, but Laura, she's a bit old, isn't she? She was six in the original one. I go, what, shall I make her four? He goes, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, listen, um, thank you very much. I'll see you soon. I'm Simon Jenkins. Thank you. We're going to get ourselves more booze, lots of booze, because you're a bit starey at the moment. You're going to get as much booze as you can and come back for the second section. Uh, give it up for two people we saw. We saw Gary Delaney, Simon Jenkins.